Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the series where we give our patrons critique and advice on how they can improve their miniatures. Yeah, we've got some great submissions this week, uh, so let's jump in and have a look. Okay, our first submission is from Saucy IRL, who says, looking for feedback on edge highlighting and shading the fabrics or clothes portion. Uh, finding it hard where to apply, I've also attempted to glaze the alpha's robes and felt some progress, but doesn't give off that blended appearance or feel to me. I'd appreciate any and all feedback. So from the get-go, uh, really great work on the patterning around the bottom of the cloak. Uh, being able to do that technical execution as in like the consistency of like that uh, almost like parapet castle-like kind of like key line definitely shows you've got great brush control. Um, I am really, really glad that you've nailed that because that looks absolutely spot on. Uh, also translates really well to the chevron pipes as well. They're really sectioned quite nicely. Um, so it's great use of that. But on, on the cloak as well, um, I think it's quite good that you've gone quite subtle regarding any shading that's on there. Sometimes uh, fabric can be painted with like shadows, probably way too dark. And secondly, as well, sometimes the, the light placement can be can be um, not in the right position. So just one thing just to really help you and, and anyone else who's watching this regarding sort of like cloth and light placement. So typically when we see cloth that's painted, a lot of the shadows tends to fall in the what is considered the deepest parts. Um, so like the, the, the lower portions of a, of a cloth or a fabric. One thing to be conscious of actually is that that's not really how light interplays with with fabric and material. So shadows on like if you think like curtains or if you think like the way that so if you look at clothing and cloth in real life, it's the angle of the material that actually determines the, the, the vibrancy of it. So with the sun being so high in the sky, obviously in, the, in space so far away, a bit of material that's yay higher than this piece is not really going to make that much difference regarding kind of like the lighting of it. So if you've got a funnel that's the high point and you've got the, the depth of a recess, it's actually the angle of that that determines how bright they are. So if they're the same angle, they're the same vibrancy, what you tend to find is actually the shadows on cloth tends to fall on the side walls and not actually in the deepest part. So it will be, it'll go light on the top, dark on the side wall because it's angled away from light. And then as it comes back out into the funnel at the bottom, the bottom gets bright again. It's the angle that determines the vibrancy, not the height or depth of it on the actual piece. So how that translates to what you've done is actually um, really good because you've not placed shadows in the deepest dark like deepest parts not darkest parts sorry you place shadows quite nicely on some of the side areas which actually shows that you have a, a good understanding of cloth um so always approach cloth in that way it, it, to think about how the piece of material is angled towards light as opposed to actually how physically high or low it is on the model the height or or depth of it wouldn't make any difference at all whatsoever with like a sun that's thousands and millions of miles away um it would literally just be the angle of it to, to just go into a bit more depth on that for you and for anyone else who's watching this um one one thing that i would say is just a, a very very quick and easy cheap win that you could do to put a lot more contrast on the model would be to you know we're getting away from realism a little bit but starting to add maybe some edge highlights along like the bottom area here and on the side walls here mm -hmm. i think that one thing that's potentially hurting this at the minute is the the gap between the brightest points and the darkest shadows is, is quite minimal in terms of yeah. uh, jump in tone. Yeah. Um, the where well, you haven't gone super, super dark with the shadows, which I don't think that you should have either just by way that the cloth flows. I think just going brighter on some of those edge points would help to add a lot more contrast to that. And it would separate the the red cloth from the rest of the model as well. Yeah, definitely. And and, and just for, for, for you watching, when you next go to approach painting a, a cape or a cloth, one thing to actually do is um, before you even paint the miniature, if you've got a model that's got cloth or, or got like a cape on it or something like that, take a photo of it on, on your phone and then just convert it to a black and white photo. Because what that will do is it'll actually show you where light is wrapping on that material or position. Um, and essentially, if you highlight and shade where the shadows are on that grayscaled or black and white photo, that will give you a much more realistic look to, to where... Um, to where the light actually hits on the object as well. But overall, the cloth looks fantastic, like really well. Like you could probably push the contrast a bit more on it potentially, as, as George has said. Our next submission is from Chris Mini Paints, and he has got a Leviathan Terminator, uh, which he, in his own words, has done in a more arty style. I will try and remove all bias on this one. Um, I think you've redone well with the arty style. Irrelevant of chapter, I think just the way that you've actually uh, painted this, it, it looks like a bit of artwork rather than a miniature, which I think is really good. Um, I really love the subtlety of the uh, object source lighting on the side of the helm from the opt optics that are above the head on the, on the left as you look at the miniature. 
Um, I think that that works really, really nicely. Um, and just the subtle catch light on the on the shoulder pad trim or on the side of the head and things like that just works really well. For me personally, I, I also agree. Like, I absolutely love this. I think it's fantastic. You've nailed the arty style. I love the the sort of looser highlights and the brush strokes and the texture. Um, I also agree that the OSL does look really, really nice and it contrasts wonderfully. And I think that you've done a great job of just picking out on some of these brighter edges, in particular from from this sort of lens up here uh, on the shoulder piece. I think that the OSL from that looks great. The thing that's just killing the OSL just a little bit for me is that the lens on the shoulder and the lens of the eyes mm -hmm. are the same in size and you've painted them the same in brightness. However, the amount of glow emanating from them seems to be differing. Yeah, yeah. So where you've got a lot of glow coming off the shoulder one, but not really any glow coming off of this eye here, for example, kind of makes it seem... It, it makes sure I look at it and make, maybe think it's not quite right. If you the, eye, the eye steers more to the sh the optics than it does onto the face yeah. plate. And, 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 and if, if I was to choose whether I'd rather have the captivating point on the model as the face or as the optics, I'd choose the face. So I think, agree, I yeah. think you pro probably should just flip the way that you approached it in future. Just, just add more OSL to the actual eye lenses and maybe a little bit less. So the eye is drawn to the head rather than the optics. Well, I think a potential way to, to combat that would be maybe even to just do that shoulder uh, lens in a different color. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause we've also got some green over here as well. I was going to uh, say about parchment. The so I'd say maybe, maybe mixing that up. So maybe keep the green lenses and just having a consistent amount of glow. If it's going to be the same size lens and you're painting it as if it's the same brightness, the same amount of glow needs to be emanating on it and all of the surfaces around it, which I think you've done really, really nicely here. But it's the fact of this lens in here is almost in shadow, yeah. which is just a bit uh, a bit off put into the eye to me. I think that if you'd done this lens in a different color, that might have helped with that significantly. Or if you just painted a little bit more glow on this uh, his left side of the cheek, I think mm -hmm. that would have really helped. Yeah, I think balancing the OSL. I, I was actually going to touch upon the purity. So I, I think that it, I understand why you've done it based on color theory, but I probably would have done that a different color so that, again, uh, you don't, the, the glow effect is the green and then the other things are different color. I probably would have done it in maybe just the stereotypical yeah. ruby kind of color or magenta kind of color or something like that. I think just giving you the, the viewer's eye somewhere to fixate on, which typically the focal point would be the face of the model. So for me personally, I want to look at that and I'll be instantly drawn to the face, whereas I'm actually drawn over his shoulder because of the glow, then secondarily to his face, but I'm sort of pulled away by this this green on the shoulder. Yeah, and I, I do you know what I really like as well the fact that you've kept the base actually really moody, like mm. with it, so the deep like deep. It's very deep, atmospheric. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I do like it ever so much, like stylistically, um, and obviously it's red, so it's it's, 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 <laughs> so it's great. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's really well executed for that kind of more arty style, which I think which I think works really nice nicely. and grim dark as well. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's it's nice to see him obviously trudging forward. So yeah, it's just really really cool. Our next submission is from Sam, who has painted a converted Reva Lieutenant. And he says, I've really tried to weather him up and give him a jungle basing, but it was a challenge to try and make all the greens fit together, but not blend into one. Mm. Uh, and he's also unsure what color the support stand should be. Um, it is quite a challenge, isn't it? That's always sort of a, a bit of a question is when you're painting any model, if it's going to be, uh, I guess, a bit more tactical, you would assume that there'll be not necessarily camouflage, but at least like wearing colors that are fitting for the environment and the terrain that they're fighting within. But trying to do that on a miniature and still have contrast and not have the model blend into the scenery too much can also be quite difficult. So so I I totally understand your pain because I had this with my Catachans because they obviously camouflaged and then jungle environment is what I've done the basis for. So I completely get I completely get the difficulty and the struggle that you're, you're facing. I personally would actually flip it the other way. So I would make the model darker and have the jungle brighter. Because if you think of films like Predator, if you think things like that, they, the environment is quite bright and green. And like when you when you see that film and if you've watched it, then all their camouflage and their equipment is a lot darker and their environment there within is a lot brighter. So it kind of means that they the what happens with it is that the darker camouflage hides them in the depth and darkness of the jungle. And it's the green, which then is the, the attention grabbing part of the environment, if that makes sense. So I, I'd, I'd actually flip it the other way if I were to approach this piece. Obviously, you've done it the way you've done it. And I just wanted to give you potentially that feedback. But um, one way you can do it is potentially just tint the armor with some glazes, potentially just tone it down a little bit because then you can go brighter on the base and still have a green model, but then there'll be dis the, the two areas will, be, will have different tones of saturation so you can visibly read them better. 
Um, that's it also gives you as well like an opportunity to bring more contrast and, and draw the viewer's eye to the face in particular because you could have that as the one sort of focal point that is brighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Potentially, yeah. Especially with the sort of skull helm because it's quite white anyway. Yeah. If you'd have gone just that little bit darker with the armor, even even if you started with the same color and just toning it down and glazing it down even more in the shadows, but keeping like a nice bright sort of face plate would still kind of give you a lot of separation as well because it's obviously it's on the head. It's, it's further away from the base. So if you think about areas like the legs, obviously being quite close to it if they're similar in tone because they're right next to each other yeah yeah it doesn't give you as much separation yeah the, the, the other thing i was going to say is like so all the two things you talk about the support and we'll, we'll touch upon that but the, i also think that you could have been quite quite efficient with the smoke as well and the smoke could have been brighter potentially and again that's another way of using using the smoke to be brighter um to, to, to kind of draw the eye to that detail because it's quite an interesting little detail on the base like the grenade that's on there i think a way to do that would be just having the brightest point of that orange be at the point where the smoke is emanating from yeah, correct, and then yeah. blending this out into darker oranges and maybe potentially even like black smoke towards the, yeah. the end of the smoke uh coming out here yeah and maybe going for like a much brighter orange at the source yeah no definitely 100 percent um regarding the support or the, st the stand that you, you mentioned you've got a couple of options really like i think Tactful use of foliage and basing material will potentially hide that quite nicely. So it looks like he's leaping from the rock and jumping over those plants, but the plants that are kind of like in and around that. So I would have probably put some big tall reeds and things like that. They've even used some sort of like ferns and plants here as well. I yeah. think using some of those, I mean, it is quite well hidden from the front. It is, yeah, yeah. But I think even sticking some of those in front of it, if you perhaps have some larger ones or even like potentially if you did just stick them to it, yeah, you might not even notice necessarily that it's, it's, uh, individual pieces of foliage that you've stuck to that sort of support pole it might just look like a big tool on the plant yeah that's that that's that definitely will work 100 percent. the other thing you could do is i understand you put the support there for a reason but i would probably have pinned the left foot solidly pinned it with a pin through the base with an l-shaped kind of bit underneath it and glues onto the underside of the base um and then that way you'd have a really strong support so you'd actually wouldn't even need the uh need the support obviously on the other foot as well so um, and the final thing, I suppose, maybe is if you don't want to do any of that, cut the support off and then balance that foot on a rock so it looks like he's stepping up onto something potentially. Yeah, um, I think that foot is actually potentially even the, the, the opposite foot to what is pinned is actually closer to the base itself. Yeah. So if you wanted the the if you wanted to minimize the amount of visible material that is connecting it to the base, I would have gone by making the contact point the part that is closest to it. Yeah, definitely. So rather than having a, a, a longer rod that is connecting, you could have had a much shorter one by attaching it to the other foot. Yeah, and and, and just as a little side note as well, is like you, the way to distract the eye um, and break up is by adding contrasting colors. So I noticed on the gun, on the on, on the optics on the top of the rifle, uh, you, you've gone for, for green on that as well. I understand why you've done it, but I think you could even go for like a desaturated dark red potentially. Same as the van brace. You don't have to go really bright, bright red. You can go for a darker red, uh, you know, and then that way it just, it breaks up the armor, break, draws the eye away from the greener, brighter armor, um, and then just helps the viewer then read the different parts of the miniature because there are different hues and colors. Um, that's probably what I would recommend. Yeah. Um, I know I'm obviously we're not going to say repaint the whole model, but like, and I don't want that to come across in, in, in as a negative because it's, it's a well painted miniature. However, I think you can easily glaze it back as we've mentioned and just, just tone it down a little bit. So it's not as vibrant and then push the contrast on the actual base. I think will work really, really nicely. So some fantastic painted miniatures this week. And remember, all the feedback that we give is purely subjective. We try to mix it up between a mixture of factual and opinionated statements and try to give you, the viewers, regardless of whether you painted these miniatures or not, uh, some helpful feedback that you can hopefully implement into your models. So we hope that even if your models weren't featured in this episode, uh, you took something valuable from the conversation. Uh, if you do want to get your models featured on a future episode, then check the link in the description of this video and you'll find a link to our Patreon and there'll be more details over there. Yeah, so thanks so much for watching and we'll see you very soon on the next one.